Okay, I think I think we're live again. And wow, I lost like all of my viewers when the stream went down. They're already coming back up now. I think you can hear me now. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Uh, between the last two times I used uh, OBS, it messed up my my audio capture settings. And I had to update some of my display capture settings. It's strange. I don't recall that being there in the past. Those three pencils. What? What three pencils are we talking about? Are you talking about what's on my screen? All right. So uh, what you missed was that I was pouring coffee with my official Compiler Explorer mug, of course. Um, I haven't tweeted this out yet. So this is going to be, like I said, super casual um, stream today. And my bot should be live telling what the plan is here. I, I see that I've got good quality streaming going on. And I, if those of you who have watched my streams in the past, you know, sometimes I've got like CPU issues causing some problems, but everything looks stable right now. So hopefully it'll stay there. Yeah, you missed the best part, unfortunately. Here, I'll just, you know, maybe I should do it again so that um, no one feels left out. I poured some coffee with my uh, French press here. That was what happened. <clears throat> All right, um, I've got a lot going on on my desk at the moment. My streaming setup, I've tweeted pictures of it before. It's kind of crazy. So let's get this tweeted out real quick. How do I do this? All right, that should be good. That's tweeted. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's not no, it's not really that big of. Well, I mean, I guess it is kind of big. Yeah, it's like, what does it say? Eight eight coffee cups, which is what four U.S. cups, or I don't know. It's weird measurements. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up as it'll be available for on demand later. Let's make sure those are settings are set correct. DVR mode is enabled, so you can rewind whenever you want to. And yeah, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it up for uh, whether or not. Stuff Americans, I don't. That comment makes literally no sense at all. We have coffee uh, the same as everywhere in the world. There's just multiple ways of preparing it. If you're referring to drip coffee, I don't use drip coffee. That's the thing that most people complain about if they want to complain about American coffee. But you should watch a pretty good episode from Technology Connections about coffee makers if you really care about that. All right, so my goal for today is, is basically this code right here. Um, if you've been watching my regular episodes about the game project, I've been a little, maybe I haven't made it terribly obvious, but I've been a little frustrated with uh, the rate at which things are increasing and uh, go, for as far as the game goes, but I've also, so I've got this visitor. I saw some of you chatting pre pre game, if you will, about this visit here. And yes, I have been playing with variants. You really couldn't find any coffee. Weird. Um, I read a topic on Standard Visit that said that this is bad practice. Which part? (laughs) 
Someone will have to tell me what specifically you're referring to when you say that visit is bad practice. Oh, is it the fact that I have this overloaded visitor like I'm doing here? Um, I'll, I'll watch the chat as much as I can to see what that's in reference to. All right. So, but the problem that I really, really have that I want is I want this right here, this SFML process event frustrates me, this thing. So I, I'm polling events, I'm reading events, I'm processing, I'm getting events. Now, this thing my process event function here takes some type of event, it decodes it, and it makes it into a variant, and then it returns that. Now, what I want is some way of being able to record and play back these events, because I really want this thing to be testable. I always feel like, for me personally, when I'm working with... Um, with GUI based things. I'm so frustrated at the lack of testability. So I want this to be testable. So I figure what I need is some sort of infinite source of game events. So I've got my game state object here. And I think what I want to do is remove any mention of SFML that I can here, maybe. Uh, but I want this game state, I want to be able to, or something, I want to be able to say, what is my source of game events? And I just want to say, give me the next event, give me the next event, give me the next event. I don't want to be doing this poll event thing here. So my next event's going to be a button was pressed, a key was pressed, a button was released, a joystick was removed, and then one of my events would be time elapsed. So if there was a bunch of input events, then I would just process them naturally. And if then time elapsed, then I would do game simulation in there. That's, that's my theory. And I have no idea if it's going to work, but I really want to kind of like bang this out and see how it looks. So let's see, let's see what that ends up looking like. And this coffee's already making me a little warm. So I don't see a whole lot going on in the chat, but like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow that. So it, I, yeah, um, let's see. I'm just double checking that all the stream stuff looks good. Good. All right. So how do I do this? I can have like um, a game event source. I can make it part of this game state object. Now the game state object already has to understand how to deal with SFML things, at least that's what it's doing currently, but no, 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 we want to remove that from here. You're going to hear just a lot of me talking to myself. What is standard launder? I can't answer that question. I have not looked at GGPO and how it does rollback code for net play. I've, um, my main experience with how game events are recorded and played back is the Doom Engine that uh, hacking that I've done in here. Okay, so uh, I'm wasn't planning to do a whole lot of like answering people's questions on this stream, but since uh, Adele Edel here just asked whether or not you should put using namespace once and include it in the whole program. No, never, anywhere, ever do you want to do that. That is a terrible idea. Um, that just, I would say as a new person learning C++, never ever use using namespace until you learn from other people when is a good time and place to use it. So that should be your goal. You're a new user of C++, never use using namespace. Well, uh, so I think I know what I'm going to do. I, I, I think I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I, I don't want SFML to leak into everything in here, but I am going to put this in the game state for right now, and then we'll worry about refactoring later. So this is my game state object. What I want is while the window is open, I want to do something like Oh, let's see if how inconsistent I can be with my naming. No, that is the style of naming that I've used here. 
That's and let's just call this and and I'm going to go into I'm going to steal this code right here. Oh, you know what I should have done? Wait, let's undo this. Let's make sure that this actually plays at the moment. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Never use using namespace at top level in header files. I would also say strongly never use using namespace in the top level of, um, uh, of a C++ file. Do that. I just want to just realize we need to make sure that this code is actually runnable before I start tearing it apart. Oh, oh, that's John. Hey, John. Um, make the event stream a proxy that you pull through, then use that to log. I'm gonna have to think about that. No, that's not a syntax error. Just run the game. What are you doing? What? Why didn't Conan run correctly? Oh, come on. So I thought that I had gone through all of this stuff, of course. All right. What in the world is going on? It's... I want to rerun CMake. I can never remember where that button is. Yeah, yeah, C make, C make. Auto reload is on. Reload C make project. Just go ahead and do it now. All right, there's Conan running. That ran. It seemed to have no problem. Now play. Ah, okay. All right. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So this is this is still working and. Oh, uh, let's get a joystick plugged in. Let's see, and that is, uh, no, no, yes. Yeah, yeah. Aha! Detected the game being plugged in, the joystick being plugged in and everything. That part's still working. All right, gamepad being plugged in. Look at the C++ 20 so far part. Yeah. All right, so you guys are chatting about standard library. That's cool. Just making sure there wasn't anything I needed to be referring, responding to at all. 
And it looks like the live stream stuff. All right, cool. All that's working. Good. Yeah. So yeah, the plan, the C plus plus twenty so far. Like we, I have, I'm trying to build a foundation here. So uh, here's the like secret, I guess, that I've been working on for the last few months. Secret, secret in quotes. It's not really intentionally been a secret or anything. But what I realized is that I want this to be like a solid foundation that people can just take this thing and easily fork it and they can do what they want to with it and um, use it similarly to the C++ starter project. So that's, that's my idea. Am I streaming on Windows? Yes, I'm streaming on Windows. Linux is my desktop. Build environment. All right. So let's get back to this game state. That's my game state object. And I want to just get the next event. So that all worked and hopefully, hopefully this will continue. To work here. So one of the things that's really slowed me down on this, and I'm just going to put this out there for you right now when you're right here as you're watching this, this MGUI SFML process event. So I have to pass the event that occurred to the MGUI SFML binding layer. And what that does is it allows things, let's bring this back up, it allows for, are you kidding? What in the world does it keep doing? Oh, that syntax error is coming from CPP check. All right, so passing this layer through is what allows these clicks to actually work. So uh, MGUI has to know what events happened and where they happened. And that happens through this MGUI SFML translation layer. So I need both an SFML event and an MGUI event that has to be passed to the, um, to the MGUI layer as well. The IDE is sea lion. Yes. Um, I use Arc Linux. No, Manjaro Linux for my for my uh, for my Linux distro. There we go. Lizia, Lizia. I don't know, something like that, Manjaro. Okay. <sighs> I haven't actually done any coding yet. That's how these things tend to go. I want to do event equals. I just want to do this right now. This is, this is really what I want to do. So that would get rid of this vector of events. This event would come in. I don't need to pull events. I do need the process event somehow. I don't need this. I don't need to keep a list of the events. I just want to know what the next event was. So I don't need to keep this because if the next event was that time it elapsed, then I'm going to pass it in here. So I'm going to take that out. Let's see. Oh, I, someone, I did this wrong. I don't want null opt T, right? What's the, uh, what's the empty thing? Yeah, you know, I'm working on it. Uh, standard chrono literals, like I'm, I'm working on, it. I'm dealing, oh no, a literals. No, I don't tend to use, well, actually I can't, I can't use the standard literals right here, right? Can I? Yes, that should be const auto almost certainly. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no literal for me to use here, I don't think. And yeah, N31415, that is a good rule of thumb. And the more explicit answer I would say is just to point out that in place back is actually calling a constructor where pushback is pressing back with an object. It's not always clear what's the best um, choice, but yeah. All right. So if 
Yeah, someone tell me what the null, I, I know I'm using null opt t wrong here. I know I am, and I can never keep that straight. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I think this is, this makes sense at the moment. Yeah. Monostate. Thank you. Yeah, what I need are coroutines. Unfortunately, there aren't any real coroutines. I don't believe they exist because no compiler has them actually implemented yet. Sorry, a cynical side of me might come out more often when I'm streaming. I haven't even had anything to drink except for coffee. All right. Um, So what is this? This value is a SFML time object. Yeah. I'm just like programming like this stuff exists even though it doesn't yet. like I'm just going to have to do this. I'm going to have to translate in and out of these layers, which seems really unfortunate, but I need I need some way to abstract this eventually so that I can swap it out with a different rendering layer. Yeah, so monostate, 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 and right, this doesn't want to be a for loop anymore. I just want to visit the event. Yeah. And someone pointed out that needs to be const auto. And this update needs to go away. There we go. Something tells me I'm going to regret how much code I just deleted from here without seeing what it all had been. All right, so these are the various game state things that could happen. Hmm. Yeah, that's never going to work. Oh, no T necessary. Oops. Uh, I saw a comment, a question, why am I not using Vim anymore? I use Vim when it makes sense to use Vim. I use CLion when it makes sense to use CLion. I use Open Visual Studio when it makes sense to use Visual Studio. Right, so that's not monostate. Oh, no, wait, that's... Okay, now I'm really curious. I need to understand monostate a little bit better. If my web browser will ever launch. So monostate, okay, that's all it is, is an empty struct. All right, very good. So monostate, fine. Monostate's passed in. Now this 
to SFML event thing, that's not going to work because this event object is a type def um, of this variant. This process event, SF event coming in. All right. Yeah, I'm going to be tearing out a bunch of code and working slowly. So, you know, thanks for joining me. This isn't going to be like super exciting. Yes. I'm on board with the pound defined monorail equals monostate. Monorail. Uh, when does it make sense to use mono? Uh, Sea lion, you know, honestly, I feel like more and more it just makes sense all the time because I can do things like this and be like, oh, that's what that is. It's a duration of T to whatever. Like the fact that I can so easily navigate um, forward and backward in my editor history and into and out of uh, types, particularly when they're types that I don't know. If I'm working on my own code base and it's 100% my own code base and I know it inside and out, then yeah, I use Vim, I'm faster there. If I'm working in a code base with libraries and stuff that I don't know 100%, then I'm just, I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use C-Line at this point. Yeah, you can do whatever you want to, of course. And I was a, a diehard Vim fan for uh, about the last 18 years. And then I started using C-Line and I said, oh my goodness, I'm actually faster. I couldn't deny the changes that it made in how I work. So continued to use it. So I had given this other thing a name. What was it? Uh, next event, yes, to SFML event, no, time elapsed. So this is my, my time elapsed type. Close window event. And it's gonna be in milliseconds, I think, so. So this can just be a source. It's just going to be the next event. What happened? Did the joystick move? Did the mouse move? Did the window close? Did we get time elapsed? Whatever. That's what this is going to be. I totally agree. Uh, my years of using Vim I think partially it, it can be attributed to the fact that I tend to have a very large mental model of my code and can often do things like go on a run and um, sort out my bug by simply going on a run because I can think through all of the code. It tends to keep it all in my, in my brain. All right, so I need to do this... Um, uh, so yeah, I just said I was going to regret the fact that I had deleted so much code here. Let me close a bunch of these things. And get back to main. I think this is the right road. I'm pretty sure this is the right road to go down. Oh. oh, I just called it next event. Not get next event. Fine. next event. Now you should be happy over here at some point. All right. <laughs> Being able to do this is really handy. Only problem is the Vim emulation really doesn't work great in some cases. I really have to just hit paste here. Oh, I don't have access. 
access to what the SFML window is. Curses. I don't know the best way to handle that. I guess I'm just going to have to pass it in for now. Dadgummit. SF render window. Yeah, give it access and figure out later. Paste is plus P. Really? Like, uh, oh, just, okay, right. Double quote plus P. Really? I have no idea what it's doing. I'm not going to worry about that. When it comes up again, you can help me figure it out again. All right, so we're passing it in here. This is getting an SF render state. It's polling. So I don't want to while poll event. I just want to whole event. So I need an SFML event object. Oh, is that SF, SF event object? Capital event. Don't want to push it back. I don't want to process it. I don't want to do a while. I want to say if then all right. If there was an event, process it. Okay. Otherwise. I want the currently running clock in my game state. Stud Chrono has a clock, right? Yeah, that's already cross platform. That is always my goal. That's how I always work. Everything's cross platform. Okay, quote plus tells them to use the clipboard. Okay, that's starting to make some sense. So I want the steady clock. Represents a monotonic clock. All right. Cannot decrease and physical time is forward between ticks is constant, not related to wall clock time. Yes, that's what I want. I want a standard uh, steady clock. This all is gonna, totally going to need reorganization, but hopefully I can get the flow that I want. Naming is hard. So this turns a time point. I am so not familiar with Chrono. I have used it very little. Turns a time point representing now. All right. Uh, 
Well, that's kind of obnoxious. Too bad you can't use auto for member variables. Okay. Copy. All right. Yeah, I think I have to use the study clock. I don't want things sticking around. All right. Quote plus. Quote plus P. Hey! Look at that. Oh yeah, I need to have a running like, uh, what theme do I use? I always use, um, what theme do I use? I always use the same one in all my editors where it's available. Um, Grovebox. Grovebox is my favorite theme. I use that everywhere. It's also what's used in my, um, my theme for Vim. All right, that is 100% valid C++, just for the record, for those of you who aren't familiar with this. I can initialize this thing like this. I can do equals initialization, or I can do braced initialization. I could do parenthesized initialization on C++20, but I'm not going to. So now my const auto time elapsed becomes the oh no wait wait how do i want to do this i'm not going to do any talk at c++ uh, cbbcon 2020 i did not submit one. Oh, is there a type def in there that i missed You said steady clock colon colon time point. Ah, oh, that makes way more sense. Oh yeah, much better. Let's do that. Really wish I could use auto there. All right, so that is when the last game tick occurred. So I need to know when the next tick is occurring. And that is, is that it's, it's so many things have the reset clock, which in the same operation uh, gives you the next time tick and does the reset of the last thing. So I'm gonna do like, No, yes, I'm using the control N in purpose. Running clock uh, now. So that's when my next tick's going to occur, or is, has it occurred. My time elapsed is, Next tick minus last tick. And then my last tick equals next tick. So this is clearly a good use case for standard exchange. I just had to think through it. Um, I think it's a good use case for standard exchange. So let's see. Just a quick reminder. I 
the object and then the new value and it returns uh, returns the old value. Let's just look at that and see if it makes sense. So I want the next tick, no, last tick to be equal to running clock dot now. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because if I do that, I still don't have that next tick saved to be able to do that subtraction that I want to. I think this ultimately will be the more readable version. So then I need to return a time elapsed. Time elapsed object with that value. Uh, I don't think you missed it. You're here. I have no idea this kind of video gets a bunch of, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever. So yeah, to be clear, this is totally casual. Hang out if you want to, don't if you don't want to, but it's awesome to have people like giving me feedback on some of this stuff where uh, there's things just in gaps in my knowledge and whatever. And it looks like we're still keeping a good steady streaming quality, so that's good. Not time point. Actually, no, wait, what is the result of, what is, what is this type? Uh, yeah. So that is a duration object, which is, I think that's steady clock. Minor problem here with C Lions Analyzer is I'm using direct initialization of this member here, which is what I want to be doing, but it still shows the member as being unused sometimes. But I think we're kind of getting there here. So if this is now the time elapsed object, and then I need to have a 2 SFML time and a Oh, and it wants microseconds. Cool. This is where I totally get lost in Chrono, seriously. Is there a reason to use standard begun back instead of... Uh, uh, it's just more generic code. Um, where was that? Yeah, like that. Uh, it's, it's slightly more generic code. So if, um, I were to hypothetically ever refactor this to take a C style array or something like that, it would work. Or if I used a type, um, you know, whatever it's, it's, I, I, it also reads a little bit more functional, uh, find if from the beginning of joysticks to the end of joysticks, you know, you can make arguments one way or the other. I just try to be consistent with it. Although I often fail. So two SFML time. So right, so this is where I get lost in chrono, is I need to know how do I return a chrono time duration in, and what, and what, what was that? Oh, 
Wait a minute, is that's the file time not private, private, explicit. This function is internal to construct time values, use SF seconds, FS milliseconds, FS microseconds. Okay. Right. I'm reading the comments. Duration cast stood chrono microseconds does not work because chrono uses integer by default. Well, wait, what does this expect? That's integer, that's fine. Should work, right? I'm totally curious about something now. That's a funny one. Duration cast is found by ADL here. Dot count. All right, now I have to absolutely try this. Okay. It seems to be... Done the exact same amount of work. Oh, it's stored in nanoseconds. So microseconds is having to do a conversion from nano to micro. Just out of curiosity, I, I didn't think. Yeah, there's no nanoseconds here. So that let's say that clock is as high resolution as we need it to be for sure. Sturg C control. It doesn't. It, so yeah, okay, I did control C, right? I do know how to use control C and control V. I just don't know what it's going to do in the Vim emulation here. That's my problem. I, I have been using those shortcuts for a very long time of my life.
Time is not literal because, oh, I can't make it const expert. Yeah, if you see me not using shortcuts, it's because I'm still learning what does and doesn't work inside of ID VM. Idea VM. All right. So that, that seemed to kind of do something there. We I do have a time elapsed. I have a single source of events. I don't have to process them. Now what's going to happen here? What's going to happen is I am going to I need to ultimately So right now I'm going to redraw on every single event no matter what. And that's definitely not what I need to do. I need to not redraw on every single event uh no matter what. So uh, uh I'm going to try something here. I don't like the flow of this. This is going to have to change at some point. So that's just going to say, if all I did was process events, then go back to the beginning of the loop and process the next event. Don't bother uh, redrawing the frame here. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I do plan to serialize a set of events. That's going to be after I understand what the set of events are that I want to serialize and how I can create a source for them. Because, uh, I mean, if you've watched any of these episodes, I really don't know what I'm doing, right? This is all experimentation for me. So, uh, and, and I'm just kind of, you know, listening to what you all have to say as much as I can. I, as a lot of grounds, I think that got on top of my press just now. I just learned while trying to make my coffee this morning that, uh, my French press, the actual screen at the bottom unscrews because it unscrewed while I was attempting to uh, use it. Yeah, no, I'm not going to put anything in threads yet. Do I want to insert a frame draw event somehow? I think that uh, effectively the time elapsed is the frame draw event, isn't it? That, that, is, that is effectively what's happening here. When time has elapsed, when there's been a pause in inputs, then that's when the frame draw occurs. I'm reluctant to put that all right here inside of this lambda, inside this visitor, but that's good. I should be reluctant to do that. And this this whole thing needs to get you know, I, I've seen comments on the YouTube channel. Yeah, it needs to be split up. I'm working on it. I'm trying to understand what I'm doing.
set in draw frame be called continuously in its own living thread regard independent of game logic? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm using doc opt in this example, not Clara. Common have a thread dedicated only to rendering and one or more on handling game logic and foot physics events. I mean, that would make sense if you could, um, however often as possible, get a snapshot of the current game state and then render the current situation. Yes, I agree. That would, that would make sense. Um, so, all right. I'm just going to undo this nonsense because we don't know what we're doing. Let's stick to what the plan is at the moment. So right now we're almost there, except for the fact that this thing doesn't know anything about mouse events. It has, it's aggregating joystick events. And it doesn't know anything about keyboard events. And then I have to be able to translate these in and out of my serialized local thing and the SFML thing to be able to process it to the pro pass it to the process events. I also need to figure out at some point where exactly I localize the SFML stuff to. Do I put it where I need some sort of rendering object, some sort of yeah, and at that point, whenever I go to play these back, I have to have some way of taking my serialized thing and putting it back into an SFML thing. Why not put the code inside the if instead of in the continue statement? Uh, hmm. Wait, that's... Uh, that's not going to compile. It's not null opt. That's a mono monostate. Monorail. Monorail. Monostate. Oh, uh, like that, right? Okay. So. Yeah, this is using immediate mode GUI, does need to be updated on every frame draw, but it can be just a render of whatever the current state is. So at some point, I like that idea. If this game state object, and I think I'd actually considered this when I was first working on this, if the game state object itself were very cheap to copy, then uh, you could just copy it whenever you wanted to. And I'm going to have to re rethink all of this, refresh joysticks, all this stuff. Right now, we just have to deal with these things. So that's joystick press, joystick button release, joystick moved. I need to deal with... And if you watched my other videos, I cannot keep these things straight. Those are the actual events that I need to know about. Button pressed, button released, entered, left, moved, wheel moved, wheel scrolled.
Uh, I'm just stubbing in all the things that I have to keep track of. Uh, I do. I have to specifically use them right now. I'm just keep just stubbing in what I need to care about in a minute here. It, it'll hopefully make more sense in a minute. Look at that. It's been two months since I looked at this code. Almost three. Hmm. Button pressed, button released, joystick moved. Okay, so if you're just joining the stream, just to keep in mind, I am, this is very casual. I'm just uh, trying to, as I have the Streamlabs bot here regularly posting what code I'm working on, the C Lion is IDE. I am just trying to make it so that I can capture and replay events in a way that makes sense. So I'm trying to capture all of the events right now. Now this stuff, uh, so these joystick events now um, are a little outdated or something because I need to keep track of Joystick, event, joystick, button, event, joystick, button, event, joystick, move. I, I feel like I'm going to end up basically duplicating all the stuff from SFML, but I kind of have to, as far as I can see it, if I want to be able to store, serialize, replay these events, and make the game state trackable, and be able to eventually swap out a different rendering engine and not have this all too tightly coupled together. I don't think I have much choice. So I'm gonna, sorry, get rid of this thing. And that wasn't being used by anyone anyhow. So event comes in, I switch on the event type, I generate an internal event that will then be serializable, and I spit that back out. And my event types. right now are just joystick, close window, time lapse, whatever. Uh, I don't want to make multiple layers of switches if I don't have to. At one time, I did do a little bit of research here. Mouse wheel moved event is deprecated since SFML 2.3. Use mouse wheel scrolled instead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, what else did I miss here?
Yeah. So Peter Mueller, I made the promise that I would be able to, you know, use this, that people could use this with SDL or something in the future. So I'm just trying to take, you know, keep in mind what the problems might be. Simply coding a template struct for a button press release instead of hard coding every button individually. Um, okay. That's why we do pair programming, right? All right. Um, how do we want to do that? So what is the data that's in one of these pressed release? It's the joystick ID which is in this case an unsigned int and a button which is an unsigned int unsinged ah, well i did that twice okie dokie there we go So these two things will look exactly the same. And then the next thing that I have to look at is the position. So it is the joystick ID, the axis, and the new position. Oh, wait a minute. Position is not, that's like a double or something. It's a float. All right. Yeah, uh, I've, I've done this before, uh, Valerio. I think that's how your name would be pronounced. Um, so if I wanted to merge uh, joystick button pressed and joystick button released into a templated thing, then the template is going to become like a tag, right? So I could do it like this. I could do like that. Now I'm kind of curious what everyone thinks of this. If I, I don't see any other way to do this, that's obvious to me. Line 115. Oh, yeah. There. Typo and joystick moved, struck. Yeah, yeah, got that. It's better than writing ideas if. All right, so yeah, go ahead, like, I don't know, vote or something. What do you think of this? Uh, is it make sense to like tag this joystick button type so that we can have one thing and then have a released or a pressed event? I could do the same thing with keyboard too after that and we'd get some reuse in this idea. And then we could do weird things like events that are just pressed or released or, or whatever. Leslie's okay with that. All right, Leslie's the one who vote. Dode voted first. He wins. No. Along the lines of pressed button rather than button pressed. <sighs> hmm. 
Well, let's see what the keyboard one looks like. So key is, I think, let's just, uh, I'm just going to use this as a little scratch space right here. That is event dot key dot alt code control shift system. I think that's, that's right, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, I, uh, why would I want to use variant? Because I need to serialize these things and I need a single stream of events. Yeah, I have Seth, yeah, some kind of runtime for polymorphism. I did not want to make a class hierarchy of this stuff that made no sense to me. These are discrete types. Um, I just got a question on Twitter. All right. Having separate structs might make sense in this case. We end up with an event system that dispatches. Okay. Yes, we have to store them in a container. We have to be able to serialize, and that's what we want to do. Why do we want the the so the whole point of today is testability and replayability. We want to be able to record a stream of events and play them back. At some point I have to have type erasure to do this. It's um otherwise it it becomes unmaintainable. There's no way to say a single function that gives you back different possible return types without doing something like this. All right, I, I kind of like this. Um, can't decide if this should be templated inheritance. Hmm. I'm going to try flipping this around. This is the kind of thing that's easy to change in the future. Whatever. Oh, no, I don't want to do this. This would too easily allow slicing and such. Maybe I do want slicing to be allowed in this case. The events are not strongly typed coming from SFML. It's a giant um, enumeration that I'm, or a uh, union that I'm trying to deal with. What does this number mean? I've had 2,200 total viewers so far. That's kind of cool. All right, um, let's stop fussing around with this too much. I, I like the idea. I don't know a good if this implementation is good or not. We're gonna go with this idea for the moment. 
and we're going to say that's a joystick button that's a joystick move if we went that route then i also want like uh, uh i don't know if this is a good idea it's fine whatever all right so the key events i need what was this again dot key dot uh, alt control shift system and the keyboard code that type keyboard key which is an enumeration of key codes <sighs> yeah this is going to prove to be a problem at some point Maybe we don't care about the keyboard right now. Protected the structure of a base class. Yeah, I could do that. Unpacking a union. My problem is this, that the moment's making everything type and then no, I'm, but no, it's, it's, you're, you're overthinking it or underthinking it, programmer, yeah? Because I don't know when you joined, but the whole point is that I can write a visitor that just does the thing. And yes, I agree, we are losing something, but we don't have to do dynamic allocation, which would have to occur if we were doing um, type erasure with dynamic uh, polymorphism. Uh, and this is effectively the same performance as a virtual function call, but without the overhead of having to do dynamic allocation for each type visited. And we can eliminate a bunch of giant switch statements by using typed function calls. So I'm pretty sure this is, uh, you know, whether or not it's the right route, it's definitely the route that I want to try to go down today. So, And now after all that, I lost track of what I was looking at. That's keyboard colon colon key. I'm going to very unfortunately use this SFML type at the moment. But uh, this isn't one of the main things that we even care about here. I'm not ever going to get this right, am I? There we go. and released possibilities of keyboard joystick buttons. All right, let's see if that works. If I get a joystick button pressed, then I want to return a using C++ 17 style aggregate initialization. 
I'm commenting that code out for right now because I don't want to lose track of what I was doing. I'm not staring at the screen right now because I'm typing. So these things become effectively the same. All right. Yeah, I see the typo. I know you all are like 10 seconds behind me and you're all probably yelling, but there's a typo there. All right, so pressed, released. It really makes me wonder if I should have other m m templates like this. Yeah. All right. So mouse button pressed, mouse button released. Mouse moved. So these are the ones that I really need to uh, get in here too. So I have my key. I have a pressed joystick button, a release joystick button. I, I do feel pretty good about this. I know there's there's people who, who don't in the chat here. I have feel pretty good about it. Although uh, what I don't feel good about is my current code formatting. Okay, really? Why, what is this? Why didn't it, why didn't it wrap that? Uh, column limit 120. That's my column limit of 120. Oh, uh, eh? No, it still didn't do it. What the heck? I don't even enable clean format. Why was clean format disabled? Ah, better. Okay. It is, a, it is actually a really interesting idea, I feel like, to have them templated on these different different types. Whoever it was that suggested that, I forget now who it was. Pretty good idea. All right. It is, it is a fascinating way to look at it. I've never done something quite like this before. Oops. Huh.
Oops. Position. Hey, noticed how using brace initialization there actually saved me from myself because it would have been a narrowing conversion. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, I think um, on paste, reformat. Uh, so I can't use reformat on save because of the sum code of the bases that I work on. And I don't, if I did reformat on save, even though they technically use a Clang format file, not everyone does that. And it makes my diffs much bigger than they need to be. So for the sake of client interaction, I try to not do that all the time. I just do reformat on the code that I know that it makes sense to. Oh, wait a minute. So there's never going to be a monostate variant from this. It always has to be one of these things happen. Either an event occurred or time elapsed. What am I missing? Uh, yeah, okay, that I know. Yeah, it is. It's the RPG project. I'm trying to make it... I'm, I'm just trying to get a bunch of foundational stuff out of the way that I've been working really, really slowly on. I want the episodes to be more interesting than they have been. Alt, Control, System, Shift. like my code to be like as straightforward as possible just like returning from a function call 99% of the time as linear as possible it tends to be more optimizable all right I have to take a break I will be back in just a few moments here um, so I'll be right back, everyone.
<sighs> All right, I'm back. Um, seems I still have some coffee left. I, I didn't realize I did. I thought I finished it off. These are awesome mugs, by the way. Quick story, because why not? Um, I had one of these mugs, and then I dropped it, and I tweeted about this, and it took a, a chip right here. It looked like I had taken a bite out of the mug, and that made me very sad. So then I told my wife and Matt Godbolt from Compile Explorer fame here that I had um, broken my mug. So my wife ordered me a new one, and Matt mailed me one. Uh, the one that Matt mailed me came to my house uh, completely shattered. And the one that my wife got me, um, I got a few days later, I that one, I had only had it for one day, and I was washing it in the sink and dropped it. And it completely shattered to the point that I found pieces far on the other side of the kitchen. So that was three mugs that I had gone through. And then my wife ordered me another one. So this one I'm trying really, really hard to not drop. That is, it is my, my life goal to not break this mug. All right. <laughs> So we've got our running time clock. We are processing these events. Where did we leave off? This is pressed released key. Someone told me that I've got a stray brace somewhere. Or missing brace. Where is that? Oh, I'm missing a colon. <clears throat> All right, so we've got the joystick events, the keyboard events, and now we definitely have to do something with these mouse events. And then we, something tells me I'm going to be sad in a moment here. Let's see something. This key event, key event. Okay, it is just a struct. Oh my goodness gracious. I was going to be so annoyed if this thing had a constructor that was private. Because I really have to be able to reconstruct these SFML events so that I can pass them to the SFML MGUI layer. Um, unless I write my own SFML, or my own MGUI adapter. So, all right, this is something that I have strongly considered, and, and I'll show you here. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now, maybe tomorrow, depending on how all this goes. But if we get to this process event function, Wrong click. There we go. Um, take take me to the implementation, please. No, stop that. Come on. No? It doesn't. Oh, because it doesn't have the source code here. Um, all right. So this thing, process event, it takes an SFML event object, right? And then depending on whether the mouse is moved, the button is pressed or released, or touch events begin or end. See, it It actually doesn't have that many things that it deals with. Ooh, I have to deal with joystick connected and disconnected at some point. Um, I've thought about just implementing my own process event that takes my variant event and does the right thing, passing that off to MGUI. And ultimately, that's probably the right thing to do. It's just not the right thing to do today, right now. No, wait, wait. Uh, yes, I have left in um, a bunch of things that still need to be dealt with. Let's see, joystick, pressed, released, moved. I think that's okay. Yeah, so um, the main things that I know that I need to get pieced back together here is for the mouse button pressed, released, entered, uh, mouse button pressed, released, and moved, I think are the the main things I need to get in here. 
Now, someone said that these events have been deprecated. Some of them have been deprecated. Let's look at this real quick. Mouse wheel scrolled, and that doesn't, oh, okay, see, it does say deprecated right there. Mouse entered and left, no data. Okay, that's interesting to know. So mouse moved event. X and Y. It's a really interesting way to express this. Um, no. I'm creating a new type, actually. Interestingly, it doesn't seem to support multiple different mice. Hmm. I thought mouse position was decimal, was it? I thought it was int, sorry. What did I miss? I missed something, I'm sure. No, that's int x and y. Oh, so you want to know at what location the mouse button was pressed. That's interesting. And what, this is probably what, left, middle, right, or something like that? Uh, left, middle, right, X button, one, X button, two, and the total number of mouse buttons. Okay, I see. Oh. Did I miss that? Let's go back to that. Um, so someone just said you can use deprecated on a enum value, and I missed I missed that, if that was any of the code that we were looking on. I like that idea. Uh, the game that I am making ultimately is going to be a top-down simple RPG. But uh, So just a little bit of a recap, because this has been going for a couple of hours now, an hour and 45 minutes. Um, besides the fact that the bot is posting things here, I'm trying to make the code into a testable state. And what I'm doing at the moment is making a single source for game events. So when the game is actually being played, and sorry for those of you who have been around this whole time, I just have a single thing that says, get next event. What was the next event? So it's a type that's coming back. It is currently a standard variant. That is a decision that I made um, a few months ago. I think it's the right decision. It might ultimately not be the right decision, but we will see. Um, so, we're just saying, what's the next event? What's the next event? Was a joystick button pressed? Was an axis moved? What happened? And then I've got this visitor variant that is going through. Now keep in mind, one thing that I was thinking about this morning on my, on my morning walk is it almost doesn't matter at all how slow this is. Um, because uh, how many game events are you going to process realistically? 
Like, are you going to process a million per frame? Unlikely. But even if you are on a modern system, you can do that pretty quick. I did an experiment the other day, which um, uh, I'm, I'm going to someday probably do an episode about it. It was an experiment that someone else asked me to do. And I tried throwing exceptions. Now, everyone will agree that exceptions are very slow to throw and process in C++. They require a dynamic allocation. They require uh, out of flow handling, stack unwinding, all these things. And just as an experiment, I modified the Doom game loop to throw exceptions during every single frame, every single game tick to see what would happen. And I had to, something on the order of 100,000 exceptions per game tick had to be thrown and caught before it made the game unplayable. So, you know, I'm just thinking, I'm not trying to write slow code with my event handling, but I'm also not trying to do the absolute fastest thing possible here right now. I'm just trying to get something that makes sense and works, particularly since I'm in a domain I don't know a whole lot about. So anyhow, random rant. I'm sure the, the comments will start coming in in a few minutes here on that. But let's get back to where I was a moment ago. All right. So I've got uh, the button. And the location where it occurred the room where it happened. Pressed, released, moved, mouse pressed, released, um, left, moved. These unhandled cases, I'm going to comment them out for the moment. We will come back to them. I don't need to handle every single possible type of thing yet. This is telling me that I've got a bunch of unhandled event types. So process event. Uh, I guess I need to leave in the uh, monostate, the monorail. Is that actually giving me a compiler error? I think it is. So this is now complaining uh, because these types don't even make sense now. Um, I thought monostite needed to be the last type in a variant. Why do I always get this stuff wrong? Uh, yes, and I did say earlier, you're right, 
that I didn't think monostate could ever happen. But I realized that this process event is taking an SF event and returning back my typed event here. So I don't know external to this what types of events I'm going to support. So I could throw an exception here if it's an event type that I don't know how to handle and then catch that in here in this process event, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And if I just return a monostate, then monostate says fine, it's going to tick back up and I know that it's an event type that I don't know how to handle in here at the moment. So I think that's okay. Maybe it's not ideal, but I think it's okay, at least for right now while we understand this. So what? All parameters should be named in a function. Oh. Um, no, I don't like that clean tidy rule. Oh, there are more options here. Is there a disable this warning? Disable. Suppress readability named parameter. Is it picking up my clean tidy? Hmm. Sorry. I didn't want that. No, oh, sure. worry about that more later. All right, talking to myself. Sorry about that. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about modifying the cling tidy file. Uh, yeah, okay. So this obviously can't compile because I don't handle all the possible states. We'll, we'll get that going in just a moment here. So this is a so this is, this is, I'm so curious about this. All right. totally do that. That's C++ 20. Um, C++ 20's uh, explicit template parameters for lambdas. Um, that, that doesn't actually give us anything useful at the moment, I don't think. Uh, so we have to deal with Hmm. All right. Sorry. Lost in thought here. All right. So I need to do this back to SFML event thing, and we're going to start getting close to at least being able to check, test this again. <clears throat> hmm. So the problem that I already had is that if this is a variant here um, of these possible types, uh, then there's no way for me to add a member function to it here. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, it should work and visit, actually. I think it should. We're going to have to play with it. We're going to have to see what happens there. That's going to be interesting. So I just need some sort of... I'm in... I, I, something... So this is, uh, now I've, I'm getting just SFML like leaked everywhere across this code and we're really going to have to deal with this again at some point here. But
And yeah, so by the time I know how to go into and out of SFML code, I think I have most of the work necessary for doing serialization, but I agree it's not necessarily pretty. Can't make it const expr. Yeah. I'm going to have to look this up. Mono state. Unit type intended for use in well behaved empty alternative standard variant, in particular a variant of non default constructible types may list a standard monostate as its first alternative, making the variant itself default constructible. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Monorail. So I stopped here because I find it really tempting to put this code to go in and out of the SFML types inside these structs, but then I'm really, I just keep ingraining SFML more and more into these types. So I'm not going to do that, but goodness gracious, do I want to do that? Oh, but I did it right here, didn't I, to SFML time here in the time elapsed. Um, I'm gonna have to make some sort of like personality layer or something. Let's, let's get the streaming of events working and then come back to it. Uh, so this all, by the way, for those of you who are um, now just joining here, this is why I did this. I'm doing this as a stream instead of a bunch of episodes because, again, I didn't really know what I was doing and I didn't want to make a bunch of, you know, just haphazard episodes. I don't remember where I put my overloaded type. It's in main here.
Uh, hello. There we go. I did give these things reasonable. Oh no, everything just says my project. Yeah, that's great. Did I give it a namespace? Namespace game, fine. Okay. Uh, Pragma once I don't like because it's not standardized and there are potential real world problems with it. I know a lot of people disagree with me, but it's fine. I don't use it. And yeah, so, you know, Pragma once not part of the standard, so it's not using all the C++ bells and whistles. Is it safer? Is it safer? Hmm. Why not include original event into the variant? Why not include original event into the variant? Uh, because that's not. Well, because I can't have multiple states and I would need both. I could have a struct that was the original event. No, but then I am really like really definitely baking SFML into this, and then why did I even go down this road? So I don't think that makes sense. Yeah, all right, uh, yeah, I don't use Pragma once. Uh, I try to keep my code 100% to the standard as much as I can. Why is this squiggled? Static member access through instance. Oh. Oh. Yeah, whatever. I, I'm totally okay with static member access through. Oh. Oh. That's interesting. Seriously, cling tidy is getting just a little. Yes, member variable has public visibility. That should not be a warning. I've got to deal with some of these cling tidy uh, warnings. That needs to be cleaned up. So I don't actually need to keep the steady clock because all of these things are. Static. Yes. Okay. Ah, all right. That's one last thing to worry about. Yes, yeah, struct is implicitly public. That's true. I could have a using.
probably a good idea. Yeah, no, that is in fact actually being used. See, right here. See it? Right here. Yep, it's being used. Okay. What is this complaining about? Yeah, okay, seriously. Where is my clean tidy configuration file? Where is that where is that warning coming from? Oh. No. I know there's a setting in here that says use my cling tidy settings, right? Prefer dot cling tidy files over ID settings. Okay. That is set then. non-private member variables in classes. CPP core guidelines, seriously. Finds classes that contain non-static data members in addition to user declared non-static member functions and diagnose all data members declared with a non-public access specifier should be declared as private and accessed through member functions instead of exposed to classes. Nay, hey, it went away. All right. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, filter it for structs only. I'm, I'm, I don't, I feel like that is way too much noise. Now, unfortunately, we still have likely and unlikely here. Um, but there's nothing I can do about that. But at least there's not so many squiggles. Oh, my goodness. All right. Sorry about that, y'all.
What? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not a designer. I don't know what I'm doing. Porting Doom gave me some ideas here. Huh. What is this? I have a bunch of numbers. Oh, oh, I see chat rate two concurrent viewers one hundred fifty seven playbacks three thousand three hundred seven cool. Average watch time six minutes and fifty one seconds. Aw. All right. Oh, I have to keep track of the time. At some point, I actually have to stop doing this, and we'll pick it back up tomorrow because that's the goal. And this is just terrible. So, uh, why, why do my no viable conversion from void to function type? Oh, okay. So this is this is a fun little thing here. I'm going to I think go down this road for this particular code, and uh, I'll explain it as I go along. I think it'll be useful for the sake of discussion here. Call it, pass a callable to the next event function and process it natively. Uh, pass a callable to the next event function and process it natively. Uh, that, I think, would circumvent this idea of being able to play back a stream, would it? Would it? If I pass a callable in, effectively make the next event be the visitor, and whatever type is passed into me, then I call that thing. That's going to make the game event loop quite a bit more annoying to handle, I think, because then I'd have to pass the callable in, and that callable would what? Have to contain the reference to the state of the game to be able to do the next thing that it needed to do. Um, yeah, it kind of makes it more like visit, visit next event or something like that. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Maybe that makes sense. Then... I think the ultimate problem, though, would be I still have to figure out who gets to process the SFML. Actually, that's a really interesting question. So the SF render window is being passed in here to next event. That's where I'm pulling the event from at the moment. And if I received a callable takes a single parameter, returns nothing. And let's look at the game event loop here. No, I'm, I'm trying to do testing with this. That's the whole point here. Yeah, I would still need to serialize something. I agree. 
So what it, yeah, yeah, I still need to serialize something and I need that in a generic format if I'm going to make it to so this swappable. Uh, what would the implications be? I feel like, I feel like I, I yeah, I, I do think that I would eventually still have to go down this annoying road of implementing the state in and out of these things. I think no matter what. So, by the way, uh, for those of you who are curious, uh, the reason this is, um, the reason this is viable here is because this visitor is a generic Lambda, so it's a templated thing. It's going to, for overload resolution, accept all the possible values. So the actual unwrapping of the type is gonna happen here. By the time I get to two SFML event being called here, I have a concrete type, or well, it's always been a concrete type. I have the specific type that the variant contained. So it's going to do a compile time choice. Uh, this basically will be unwrapped into uh, N possible overload calls, and it's just going to call the pro possible overload. So part of this is resolved at compile time, part of it's resolved at runtime. Yeah, I, yes. I, so I'm not going to just store the SFML events. I'm not going to, because we've said that we're doing the possibility of swapping it out for SDL. So I'm not going to store the SFML events. Uh, const expr. So theoretically, this could be const expr, and this could be const expr. Now the reason they can't is because these um, because the types here key event um, These these uh, are most of them can't be const expr, but we'll see. Some of them can be. I cannot keep these things straight here. So this struct event All right. Is it event key pressed? Man, I cannot S F event event. Let's just call that E. So that has a key pressed. That's an enumeration. Yeah, that's an enumeration. So the event contains The event type, okay, so the event type and then a union of all of these things. So that is a key event, all right. So I want to return an SF event type 
is key pressed and it's not giving me the union. Is the union anonymous? The union is in fact anonymous. Oh, but there's only two members in this thing. Is that going to compile? Why isn't it going to compile? No viable conversion. Three event key event unsigned in. Oh, come on. Key pressed, value dot source dot key dot key. I feel like all right. Oops. Now, at what point did I make it the active member of the union? Is this valid C++? I hate unions. Yeah, they're not the same type. I can't do that. I had braces incorrect the first time I tried it. Probably. So what is the type of key here? That is a key event. It really doesn't like that. It doesn't know how to initialize the member of a union with braced initialization. Whatever. Uh, and I have to know the exact order of these members if I do that. I might do that just to default initialize this thing to make it explicit that it's the correct value of the union. Context of a function never produces a uh, call, member call on member key of union with no active members not allowed. Yeah, all right. So we're going to have problems with making this const expr, unfortunately. And similarly, because that's calling a non const expr function, we can't do that. And this is absolutely obnoxiously annoying.
Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat window at the moment. Uh, yeah, I tried to use named initializers. Oh, right. So I might have more luck with that here. Right, 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 right. Let's do that. All right. Um, oh, seriously. All right. Okay. We might get somewhere with this. Now, the problem with named initializers in the event is that's anonymous union, and it really didn't seem to like that. I don't know. Who's having fun at this point? Well, that might work. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I saw your uh, comments, by the way, that I was missing an initializer here. I angered Sea Lion. It has no idea what's going on here. It's not syntax highlighting anything now. Uh, what theme is it? Grovebox. Uh, Yes, uh, return value optimization is actually never guaranteed. It just happens to do it all of the time, uh, unless there's named return value optimization is never guaranteed. I've done a few episodes on that kind of thing. So, so it really has gotten angry at this point. It's not highlighting anything. It doesn't know what I'm trying to do. I don't know what to do with that. I can never remember the uh, reformat thing here. That it seems to be all right. Clang reformatted it with no problem. And that, da, 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 if I build, what does the compiler have to say? Syntax error. Oh, right. That's still CVP check. I need to deal with that. Missing initializer for member event code here. Uh, what? Instead of error missing initializer for key event alt designator order doesn't match declaration. 
Uh, oh, all right. Has no non static data member named key. Key event. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I fixed the braces instead of parentheses. I am using the latest version of CLion. I just updated this morning. It does support the designated initializers, but it seems to just have, it's not happy, but so is the compiler not happy. So it it's not really surprising here. Missing initializer for event code. I'm not missing the initializer for event code. This is the kind of thing that's going to make me just stop for the day. Code is first, then alt control shift system. Let's put it in the right order and see what happens. Code. Wow, I got it literally like in complete backward order. Alt. <laughs> Control shift system. I feel like I, I'm, I have to blame Clang or something more at this point than anything else. Yeah, I know it has to be in the right order. It's terrible warnings that it's giving me, though. Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. No matching function for call to invoke lambda, blah, blah, blah. This is the problem with variant. This is the real problem with variant right here. Because these errors are absolutely terrible. Required from here. So it's telling us that we've got unhandled cases effectively. Which is absolutely true. Yeah, adding dummy lambdas now. Well, just adding the generic. Oh! It linked. That's weird, because this 2SFML event right here. Generic to. Oh! <laughs> uh, that's gonna. That's gonna cause an infinite loop there. It's. um. It has no problem with just calling itself recursively. Uh, yeah, that that shouldn't have <laughs> that shouldn't have compiled. Uh, <laughs> um, no. Uh,
No, wait a minute. That's that. Would that? What is my event? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's a variant, and it's got implicit constructors. Then it is just invoking itself. I'm going to do that just to un. And look, things have no longer lost their minds here. It's it's starting to do something. Um, no viable conversion for return value of type int and function return type SF event. Excuse me? Oh, oh, okay. So we're we're actually to the correct thing now. <clears throat> uh, yeah, different names are in order. I was actually really hoping to to be able to just have it strongly typed and just call it two SFML event and anything SFML event like that you passed in, it would just do the right thing. That seems to have really just not been a real option here, but I think I'm going to end up with some reusable code here. And again, you know, this might all prove to be like, you know, useless down the road. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is all wrong. I don't know. But at least the compiler's catching us if we don't have the right things implemented. Um, what time is it? It's 2.30. I'll take another break in a minute here. Uh, what, are, what are my types here? Pressed key, released key, pressed joystick button, released joystick button. Uh, now it's absolutely guaranteed to be um, return value optimization here. Not that it really matters for these simple types, but I'm starting to feel pretty good about some of this code here. And the implementations are not too bad. A little bit of copy-paste action. Might be able to simplify it further, but I'm, I don't think so. All right. Yeah, I probably should put it in a protected scope at some point. Spells to smile. I think you might have meant starts to smell if you doze off and squint at it too long. Two SFML event sort of spells. To, oh, I see. Yeah, uh, I can see reasons definitely to make, to get, this is going to want to be encapsulated in a struct at some point. What I'm imagining is that at some point in the future, I'm going to want to basically make this a personality that gets passed to the game. So the game, is this an SFML game? It is an SDL game? And it's something that is a template type chosen thing, I think. So... 
Um, but I really wanted to like kind of understand what I was looking at before I went that road. I know a couple of people have already commented that I'm making this overly generic already, but I want to feel out what what all of these things mean before we um, uh, get too far with it. All right. So what's going on here? Get lost in my own code. All right. So let's make sure we know the order of these things. Button ID and button. Now joystick ID and button, joystick ID, ID, button, button. What did I do wrong this time? Oh, did, were you already saying that? Can you just pass designated initializers directly to the return? Uh, maybe, yes, probably, should be able to, in fact. Uh, that's a good point. That falls under like a do not repeat yourself principle of C++ here. Let's see if that worked. Right? Yep. I actually like that a lot, personally. There's no reason to keep writing the same lines over and over again. Should either use auto return type deduction or simplify the return statement. I'm fully on board with that. Joystick button. All of this makes me think we I want to I want to do at some point make these designated initializers as well. Just to reduce the question of what order are these parameters in? It's out of curiosity. Oh, that does actually do what I expect it to do. Since it's not syntax highlighted, I didn't know if it did or not. All right. Joystick button pressed, released, key pressed, released, joystick axis moved.
I do have to deal with the connect and disconnect at some point, but I want to get this just nominally working again. And I'll spend time tomorrow figuring that out. ID axis position. All right, getting there, getting there, getting there. We have mouse events, pressed, released. Okay, I have to take another break. I'll be back in a minute. I think I cannot do this for much more than an hour as far as my schedule goes, but again, I'm gonna be playing with this tomorrow. Really want to get this bit compiling and at least prove that we have made our stream of events and that we can do something reasonable with them. So I'll be back.
Yeah, I actually agree. I don't want a whole lot of stuff on my screen either. That just kind of happens after I had a couple of things going. I also normally have a slightly smaller font when I'm not trying to stream. Oh, oh, lost a bunch of viewers during my break. Well, yeah, Sea Lion has a Zen mode. I don't like the Zen mode entirely, though. I feel like it takes too much away from the screen. But anyhow... All right, let's see if we can build these last couple of visitors. Joystick move. Huh? Aha, all right. Joystick moved, and the joystick move is the... There we go, all right. Hmm, mouse moved. Uh, I don't know. As far as I know, the classes are not full, Daniel. Um, uh, for the Stuttgart classes, go ahead and mention that right now. Of course, uh, I would love to make this trip. At the moment, I'm keeping a very careful eye on whether or not Germany will actually allow me come because I am in the United States. And if you haven't been paying attention, we do in fact have a uh, ban on U.S. travel to Europe right now. The uh, European Union, the Schengen uh, passport region is barring uh, US visitors because of the whole COVID thing. So uh, hopefully that will be lifted before the end of September. But I honestly, I mean, we just have no way of knowing what's going to happen, of course. But we do, I do plan to be there right now. Yeah, thanks for those of you who have been uh, a lot uh, along for the ride today. You know, piping in and giving other people updates as to what's going on here. I'm getting pretty close to having these things that in some sort of serializable kind of fashion. I think um, we'll see what happens. Well, not serializable yet, but I am, I'm pretty happy with these designated initializers. So, I mean, we get to talk about like, you know, C++ 20 here. That's pretty cool. And I agree, you know, these, the comments that I've gotten today have been uh, really helpful. I just realized in reorganization that I think makes sense. A mouse button pressed arguably contains a mouse. It's not just a button. 
and an X and a Y. It's a button and a mouse. Like that. Which then means that if I do a mouse button here, That's a mouse button event, and that is a mouse button. Then I can return uh, dot button equals mouse dot button dot x equals mouse dot mouse dot x. Rename some of these things later. Uh, what I, I I can't help you if you want to shift click. That's well, um, well then your your game system is going to have to be able to deal with the fact that if multiple events came in with no time press passed, then you have to know what the last shift state was. Yeah, we're only going to have to do it with one mouse. There's no other option, I don't think, here. This code certainly doesn't. But it would be, could be interesting. Code is looking functionally. I expect to see a bunch of F maps soon enough. Yeah, I'm trying to be pretty functional. Passing primitives as const. Uh, yes, I, I definitely pass primitives as const. If it's a built-in type, I pass it as const, not a value, personally. That's what I do, because... I want to make it clear to the reader of the code that where I'm not planning to modify that value internal to the function that protects me from a couple of things, but that's not an argument for today. Um, so I'm just looking to see if there's any, uh... yeah, key remembers if shift was held during its press. So we'll have to keep track of that. I think that'll be all right. Yeah, there's there's a, like a 15 second delay or whatever still here. So, you know, that's cool. Um, but I think some of the stuff that we're doing is making sense. All right, so that's not going to work because that is, it needs a static cast. Whoopsie. That's weird. Why do we have the same function in here twice? All right, mouse moved, um, pressed and released mouse button, and oh, all right. Mouse button. Mouse button. Oh, that's just mouse button. Okay. Oh, what did I just do? No, oh, that's fine.
Yeah, does it bother anyone else that this code all looks almost exactly the same? Like, we need to... Simplify this maybe more at some point if we can. All right, pressed. I have a, I see a looming problem here. So my next two event types, close window and time elapsed. Time elapsed is definitely an event type that I have to deal with, but it's not something that is directly translatable into an SFML event. I need to have an empty event of some sort. Um, but I don't know what that's going to look like. So let's go ahead and do the Yeah. Line two two five has a wrong designated initializer. Two two five. Dot. No, I don't think it does now. I think it did when you typed that message. I think I've already taken care of it. Yeah, so it does. It bothers you a lot, but I don't think there's anything we can do about it. I tried to make it as simple as I can here but the actual member that I have to initialize, I, I have to call that member explicitly. And then the uh, type is an explicit type. So I think it would be just yet another layer of indirection if I tried to change this. I don't think there's anywhere else I can go with it. If someone has an idea, let me know. I'll try to follow along here. does not bother you that progress is being made and things are becoming clear. Yeah, I, that's how I, I generally feel. Like if I, I, I want to see progress, I want to see simplification each step that I can. So that was, oops, mouse moved. Oh, wait, that's all wrong. I'm trying to lift pieces of this out of the less strongly typed SFML and into a more strongly typed world. And again, with this layer of abstraction, let us serialize and replay events later and such. All right, what was the next one? It was closed. Window closed, close window. Close, oops window, close window. And my event type is closed. Ah, oh, there is no member for that. All right. Size event. We'll deal with that at some point, won't we? All right. So the last one we have to deal with. Wait, why is that? Oh. Should be released, not pressed. Pressed, oh, yeah, I did it twice, didn't I? All right. All right, so that. Let's 
go back into this. Really? Why are you going to do that to me? Text event. Key text. Text entered event. Gonna have to deal with that at some point. Now smooth event, touch event. All right. So. Yep. If just time has passed, I have to deal with the no op event. This looks like it wants to compile. This is eventually going to want to compile. Uh, at the moment, I'm just commenting the name right now to shut cling tidy up. I need to change that. Yeah. Uh, it's, yes, maybe unused is totally valid. Um, it's no, I, I, I would do, I, I would personally just not name it at all. And then I got frustrated with cling tidy and that's where we ended up. I'm going to just see where we are right now. I don't understand why this isn't compiling. No viable conversion. Whoa. Cannot initialize a member sub object of type. Deduce visit int. Who, who said anything about deduce visit int? What? Oh. I pre-moved the one I actually needed. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I'm guessing you're all just screaming at the computer right now. Yes, this is what happens when I've been streaming for a few hours straight. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it just brain cramp here. Uh...
trust me, I'll, I'll clean this up. I just want to, again, see where I am. Just putting in what I think would be a relatively harmless event type right now. Ah, all squigglies, go away. Yeah, whole file, thank you. I, I need to change this. I don't like the way that's being formatted. Okay. These all think that they're not being called, but they're totally being called R right here. Yes. Yes, okay. Syntax error. Oh, right, that's still that. Um, yeah. It's not entirely fair to say it's the same benefits as the inheritance without the vtables because they definitely still have something like vtables in them. Missing initializer for event anonymous. Fancy. Uh, I have to give it an active member of the union. That's actually really interesting to me. It's the kind of thing that I wondered about. Sensor event, touch event, size event, key event. Can I just default initialize a size event? Maybe? Or not use designated initializers in this case? It's just dot size. All right, there's messages coming in. All right, we're going to have to fix up a couple of these things. This is definite code smells happening here. All right, someone needs to help me figure out how to disable syntax errors in my Oh, 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 oh. Hey, look at that. Things are in fact working with our own set of things. Now the joystick events aren't working, but the mouse click events are. Wow. Okay. So what did we gain or lose through all of this? I think this is the main thing we've got. Uh, okay. So if a game, oh, 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 okay. I know why the game joystick events aren't working. We'll figure that out in a moment. Const expert virtual functions, yes, you can do const expert virtual functions in C20. Alright, so we want um, let's see, let's see what we got here. So this SF clock, this delta clock, is this being used anywhere? Delta clock. No. Okay, let's get rid of that. Um, this SFML process event thing, we're gonna have to deal with that later. Uh, my visitor, I want to reformat this code. Um, I really don't like this. There's a couple of things that we need to clean up in our... Yeah, I mean, that looks way better. I don't know. We need to feel fix with that. Um, 
in our cling format file. So if it comes in and there is a, all right, so we've got an SFML call here, an SFML call here, and the SFML window, and the SFML process event, and then we've got these things. So I'm gonna to need to start consolidating these SFML things into, like I said, a personality class of some sort, a trait class, something like that. Um, so if I can do, That's saying if a joystick button was pressed and then a joystick event occurred and then I go to the game states and I get all the joysticks. Now, hmm. I compiled and it all ran. There is no errors there, dig. Although, just so you know, your message should get blocked, but I saw it. Yeah, I was thinking about standard optional. Um, I was gonna go that route next. I kinda wanted to see these joystick buttons working. I'm clearly processing the joystick pressed and released events, but um, I'm not actually managing the joystick state anywhere. So I want to know, like, should I keep all these joystick states in? I don't remember how I was last managing this. Oh, that's right. In my visitor, if a joystick event occurred, Refresh the joystick. Ooh. I am shocked that that compiled. That's where I moved the mouse inside the mouse button event. That's kind of weird. Yeah, I know I commented out the joystick state update events, but I'm trying to remember how they were processed in the first place. It clearly doesn't make sense to keep managing them here inside the SFML thing, um, because this process event, this, this is poorly named. It shouldn't be called process event. It should be, uh, well, I don't know. Is it pro it's not really process. It's, it's to event. It's, it's to event. Let's call it, okay, this, by the way, to be clear, is why I've really, um, yes, I, I know there's shortcuts for all these things. Uh, I, I don't know them all. But this is why I really started liking Sea Lion as one of the reasons, because I've been doing a ton of refactoring of other code. So if I can just do rename... And bam, it, it does the thing. So to event, fine. So that's the point of that one. And then I think that it makes sense for this next event to then update the internal joystick state. 
probably. I'm going to worry about that in a little minute, though. So you all, several of you have been saying, yeah, trans, oh, translate event. Yeah, something like that. Convert, translate event. Yeah, not dispatching, though. And yeah, CRTP can be used for compile time polymorphism, but not for, well, not for runtime polymorph. Well, kind of, could be. Mm. No, not for runtime. All right. <clears throat> so uh, the parts of this are starting to come together. We do feel like we're getting somewhere. Now, a couple of you just commented that this needs to be an optional, and I, I reluctantly agree. I don't like standard optional at all for various personal reasons. Um, That's an extra brace. There. All right, so now my 2SFML event returns this optional. And this process event is now clearly not going to work. So we need <laughs> the monadic interface to standard optional to make this look good. Uh. No, no, there's, there's no game yet. There's no game. It's 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 just background still. But I really wanted to give a good foundation, so I wanted to spend a bunch of time on this. And I've got at most an hour more that I can spend on this today. All right, all right. Standard optionals interface. Now I don't think we got the monadic interface, did we? What did we get? We get a value, value or, swap, make optional, hash, bad optional class, null opt. There's no if kind of functionality. I kind of, you know, I, to, yeah, right. I'm guessing at least a few of you have never seen the syntax before. Any, I need any. Oh, there is the asterisk dereference interface to it. All right, this is C17's if initializer. So I am initializing a new value called SMFL, SFML event, and then I am checking to see if it does contain something in fact, and if it does, then I'm calling process event. So we got rid of the hackiness. And I feel pretty good about most of this code. We just have to deal with this joystick stuff now.
Can't you just pass the SFML event to SFML event and keep your version of the event as the local event variable instead? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I still just have to know if it's a safe event to pass it since we now made it an optional return value make sure that it's something that SFML would in fact care about. I have a really crazy idea I want to play with real quick. It's not something I've ever really done before. We've got these various um, joystick button, joystick access, access event things, right? So I've got two different types of joystick events, four different, three different types at the moment. I've got button pressed, button released, access move and they are contained within these joystick button and joystick access things. And then I've got this. Pressed, released, moved. Mm, I don't know, I was just trying to think of a way to like do some sort of handy like uh, C++ 20 concept tagged thing to say, oh, this was generically a joystick event that occurred. Maybe I'm not gonna worry about that at the moment. The other way would be to invert and pass a Lambda with an auto event, yeah. Uh... Oh, this is, this, by the way, is mouse event or anything is being happened right here. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, uh, now I'm just talking to myself. So those all happen if I've got a joystick event. And so I need to now I need to update the internal joystick state whenever any of these joystick events come in. Why is this squiggly again? Oh. Okay. Could you not overload the template template parameters? Template template class event type joystick button can get you an arbitrary joystick button event. I have never successfully found a use case for a template template parameter, although I will agree that that may be a valid use case. Why not?
Yeah, I have no idea where that's supposed to go, honestly. Template template parameters requires class after the parameter list. Does it go there? No. No. Oh. Yeah, because I don't have to put the explicit template keyword there. Uh, right? Okay. Yeah, but I don't put the, the first template, right? Because this is a Lambda template. So just the fact that the angle brackets are there means it's a template. Now a class before the event type and I am good. Okay, that is officially the first template template I have ever written. And I didn't even write it, you all did. Yeah. We got it going now. I missed someone's comment, I think, I'm sure. Um, all right, I'm gonna see about getting these joystick events processed and let's see what happens. Yeah, so this, this is where I want to like, uh, I wanna think about this. So this is a joystick event incoming here so if I want to update the game state game state's got its refresh joystick joystick by ID So this is my own internal representation of the state of a joystick. And that's the stuff that had been commented out. Right. Okay. Right. So this is where I really want something here. Let's do this. Oh no. It is a thing of beauty. <laughs> uh, 
But I like the fact that my joystick, I'm becoming a little bit less coupled to SFML a little bit each step along the way here. So I, I think I think I am. I just have to forward declare or something these types here, unfortunately. I'm just going to move them up because they're not dependent on anything else. This class is getting a little too big for itself. But this can start to have meaning again. Oh. That doesn't need to live there. That wants to live there instead. Oh, not paying attention. Okay. All right. Nope. You no. I'm just typing away here. I want fall through, it seems. Huh? Uh, no, 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 no. Yes, 
Yes. All right. I do want I do want a common function. I'm going to figure this out. We're going to what we're going to do is we're going to have some sort of C++ 20 concept to say is this a joystick event? That's what I want. The exclamation of event shadows a previous local where No. Huh? Oh, it does shadow a previous local. Actually, it shouldn't. Uh, yes, next event, right, okay. That's what I'm processing. Yeah, good point. Uh, we don't want that. No, 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 we, we want, yeah, not F const expert, we want, we want, we want a concept, trust me. All right, that still works. Let's see. Hey. Hey, look at that. X, Y, buttons pressed, shoulder buttons, yay. Uh, this particular joypad doesn't have uh, analog sticks on it. It's just what I had available to me at the moment. All right, we have a set of abstracted events that I could start serializing or something and replaying and actually like making this into something that's testable. I'm pretty happy about that and I'm running out of time. I am going to try to make a quick concept here that says this is a, so that is a joystick. It joystick buttons, joystick access. So I want to do something like uh, how do I want to do this? All right. It's the simplest way that I could do this. I'm going to have to double check my concept syntax. There's got to be a better way to do this. But it'll get us something clean to start with.
normal type shit is better than a concept here. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to do a concept for a reason. Um, but you're probably right. And just, but I'm also just uh, trying to learn something here. Yeah, yeah, constant syntax error. Concept joystick event, not a namespace scope. Expected primary, all right. All right, uh, fine. Um, <laughs> All right, what am I missing here? Requires uh, it's a joystick event. Missing the requires. I don't think I have shadowing again. Maybe I do. See what the compiler has to say about it. Ah. Whoa. Expected semicolon. Oh, unexpected semicolon. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. It does shadow that. That's silly of me. Yep. 
I, I do want to make this into a concept at some point here. And I saw some of the comments from you about what might be required to do that. Who knows if clang tidy? Yeah. Now let's see if clang tidy is able to handle. No, it's not. Clang tidy does, or clang format does not have any idea how to deal with this requires on a Lambda declaration. Now let's see if it did what we wanted it to do, and then I'm going to wrap it up. And it did not. It did not. Why did it not? Requires that this is a joystick event, a JS event, decal type. Uh, missing return keyword. I don't think so. Am I? Let's, no, that's what it was. <clears throat> so the decal type of this JS event was being deduced as something like const joystick event or const reference to joystick event or something like that. And then therefore this joystick event require, um, type trait here was, was not able to to uh, say that it's the same type. So I don't love this, but it's a step in the right direction for sure. It's definitely a step in the right direction. What we really want is a concept. Uh, no, I'm not missing the colon colon values here because this is a const expert static bool and this is a underscore V. So, it also said that a concept is not allowed to be at struct scope. It has to be at namespace scope. So let's just try this again. Looking back at that syntax, this is not the full syntax of these things. All right, requires. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's probably decay is not the right option, not anymore. Expected primary expression before equals. Goodness, it is lagging on me right now. My IDE is.
Oh, that did not do anything pretty. Just gonna comment that out for a second. Parentheses after requires. Mm. Uh, expected. I think if the requires doesn't require parameters. Hmm. All right, it's matching too many things. Why? Yeah, that's what I thought, but then the rest of you are saying that I need a uh, requires in there. And the compiler is... a little complainy about this. I just do it like that? Oh. Oh. It does appear to be compiling. No, oh, we're all learning how to use concepts. There we go. There we go. Okay. That is what I wanted to see earlier. Thank you everyone for the help. Sorry if I missed your comments when they were apropos. Oopsie. Let's see how many times it takes to do this by hand. All right, that looks great. That is exactly what I wanted to see. So a concept. This is a joystick event. A joystick event came in, we pass it to the update event, and we say a joystick event came in. Are we good? I think we're good. What need to read? Yeah, so yeah, the, it's, things are lagging a little bit now, but that is exactly what I wanted to see. So I'm going to get rid of this other type trait in here. Um const expert templated variable and it's about time for me to go so let's get this all saved off here all right looks like we're pretty good
Oh no. Okay, good. I didn't have to deal with some sort of uh, merge conflict here. Um, let's retag that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do I move the tag? Replace the tag. I didn't push it anyhow, so that's fine. Probably a way to do that in one step. I honestly have no idea. All right. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, uh, I need to fix some clink format stuff to re make a comment on that earlier thing. Uh, this, is, this is, oh, goodness, four hours and 11 minutes. Yeah, concepts, awesome. Um, and it's pushed up. It's tagged anyone who wants to take a look at that. I'm keeping track of these things on the on the github repository as best as i can so uh, yeah everyone have a good night and good morning perhaps to those of you depending on what time zone you're in i'll see everyone later